Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to another live stream. This is Ask the Cheese Man, and it's episode 173. I'm uh, Gavin Weber. I'm going to be your chief curd nerd today and hopefully answer some of your home cheese making questions. All right, lots of people in the chat today. It's fantastic to see so many people. Um, I did say a uh, big g'day to lots of people early on and kim's there which is fantastic kim's our moderator kim weber and uh she'll be making sure that uh, everything goes according to plan which is always a good thing okay um so shout outs i've already shouted out to lots of people but uh let's say good day to patricia uh siphon rider who's uh, i think it's his first live stream uh aga g'day mate lovely to see you uh, judy um who else we got in there uh ruth of course kim we got uh patrick we've got david ember um uh beer sauce nice <laughs> uh annette lovely to see you Annette. adam uh johnny uh martin and Oh, Sam and Phil so far in the chat. Lovely to see everybody. Oh, and uh, Michelle, lovely to see you. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Thank you so much to all the financial members of the show, whether that be on YouTube memberships or Patreon. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, no new members or patrons this, this week, but it's Easter. It's a quiet weekend usually. Um, uh cheese videos that are in production uh i've got uh castel blue which is a creamy uh blue cheese i've got three of those uh they're in the um uh they're in the cheese fridge in a ripening box just before piercing i'm going to uh pierce them tomorrow uh, they seem to be draining all right Still a little moist, which I'm a little bit concerned about, so I might let them air dry for uh, half a day today because blue cheese doesn't necessarily like a, a moist surface. Anyway, so that's in production. And don't forget, at uh, 30 minutes past the hour, we will have the uh, Ask the Cheese Man gallery, and we've got a few photos to show there, which is lovely. So um, let's get into the questions um let's see if anybody's got any um yeah um, let's have a look sam has a question or a statement you're right about my feta brine last week thanks again that's where i think uh, uh didn't have any uh, calcium chloride and vinegar it was slimy uh but that's all fixed well done thanks sam good on you mate um Martin has said that when I first stir my cut curds, they are lovely little cubes, but often they seem to lose their shape as stirring and get porridgey. Uh, Gavin's always look lovely and cuby. Hmm. What could that be? <clears throat> uh, sounds like the curd strength is not all there. I'm not sure what type of milk you're using, Martin. Um, I know that I find that uh, when I use unhomogenized milk, I the curd structure is really solid, which is good, as, as you need it to be. I find that when I use homogenized milk, however, the curd structure, when you start stirring, does tend to break a bit um, and uh, definitely really do have to add that calcium chloride, which uh, which definitely helps. So not sure what type of milk you're using, Martin, but yeah, I did find that when I was using homogenized milk, uh, that it does turn the cubes, get a lot smaller, a lot quicker. They break as you stir them and all that sort of stuff. So a um, uh, big shout out to uh, Janet and Robert in uh, Norwalk, Iowa. G'day, lovely to see you. 
Uh, David has a question and says, uh, should I store my cheese bought from the grocery store in the fridge or should I store it somewhere else? Uh, yeah, definitely keep it at four degrees Celsius. It stops it from maturing any further. Um, it also depends on your climate, of course. Um, certainly here in Australia during spring, summer and autumn, uh, I wouldn't leave cheese on the counter for more than 30 minutes unless you're going to eat it. Um, and then it's come up to room temperature, but it gets quite warm. So uh, I last week somebody told me that they had a, a what's known as a cheese bell, and that's where you have this glass, uh, it's like a clotch, and it sits over the cheese, and that's how they used to store their cheese back in the old days. But, uh, yeah, the, I've got tons of cheese in my kitchen fridge, and that's where we keep it. But thanks, David, for your question. Um, we've got a super chat already. Thank you so much. Uh, it's from Toby, and Toby has kindly donated to the cause uh, £4.99. Thank you, Toby. So his question is, uh, when aging an Emmental at 21 degrees for two weeks, does it matter what humidity the room is? Our Emmental got a bit cracked. Look, ideally, uh, those the ripening rooms for Emmental are warm because the Propionic Shimani needs a little bit of warmth to... Um, uh, make changes to the pace so it's more creamier and smoother and therefore the CO2, the, the eyes, when the, ga the gas is produced, it's it, they expand better. You do need a little bit of humidity, um, which is one of the main reasons I tend to wax the cheese. And as it expands, yes, the, ch the wax does crack, but it's still protecting the cheese. Um, if it's a pretty bad crack, what I'll do, Toby, is... I'll re-wax the cheese again. Uh, you know, just dip that cracked bit in there. Uh, you'll rarely see mould or anything like that on the surface of an Emmental or any any Swiss-style-eyed cheese. Um, so, yeah, you should be good to go. It's no big deal. As long as it doesn't crack, like, straight down the middle or have a big fissure-type thing in the cheese, usually the paste is smooth enough that it'll expand without the cheese itself cracking. The wax will crack all the time. So that's no big deal. Anyway, thanks, Toby, for your super chat. Appreciate it. Right, eh? Um, so look, got another question from uh, Manel. Manel says, "What is the ideal pH for Budokaze cheese when I'm cooking the curd?" Uh, not sure. I don't use pH typically in recipes, Manel, um, but I usually check it. Um, when I do check pH, um, I would say between, well, 6.8 is the usual pH of milk when you start. I think it gets down to about 6.4 after acidification and then rapidly goes downhill from there. Uh, so, yeah, look, um, not too sure. You'd have to ask a, um, go and refer to the one books. One of the best books for the pH stuff that I've read is uh, by Giannoclus Caldwell, um, and it's um, Mastering Artisan Cheese Making. It's a really good book. So if you haven't got that one, man, I'll see if you can find it. Um, uh, Martin says, my saffron cheese is looks like a brain in a vat, but in a cheesy good way. Nice. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, M. Gamble says, Hey, Gavin, can we get starter cultures out of store bought cheese like blue cheese, Emmental? Is it possible? Would you please advise me on how to extract the culture or inhabiting it? Okay, so uh, you cannot get the starter cultures out of cheese that you've already bought. And starter cultures being the lactic bacteria. Uh, because essentially it's dead, it's converted, it's died, and the enzymes that are, are left behind is what helps the cheese to mature. So you won't be able to harvest those at all. However, the molds, you will be able to. So the blue mold and white mold that are in cheese, you definitely can. However, if you're looking for simple substitutes uh, for those um, 
Thanks for the super chat. I'll get to that one in a sec. Um, if you're looking for simple substitutes, so culture buttermilk is a good substitute for aromatic mesophilic culture, if you can get it in the store. Uh, and yogurt is a okay substitute for a thermophilic starter culture. However, it does have lactobacillus lactis um, bol uh, subspecies bulgaris, which is a thermophilic culture that is a rapid acidifier. And if you're looking for a sweet alpine style cheese, you won't get that flavor with using yogurt as a thermophilic. So um, surely you can import um, starter cultures from somewhere. Uh, but anyway, thank you for your question. Uh, we'll get to that super chat now, which is from, uh, it's from Yay Deep. Thank you, Yay Deep, for the uh, $5 US. You don't have a question per se. It doesn't say, but thanks for your super chat. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, there might be a question up there somewhere. Hang on. There it is. There, there could be it. Um, yeah, he says, uh, great videos, very inspiring. Can you suggest develop a recipe for petite Basque style cheese? I will put it on my list. Um, we'll have a look, see what I can come up with. I'm not sure if I've got a recipe for something like that, but we can always figure something out. Okay, um, back to the other questions. Yeah, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Dan P says, seeing your videos on YouTube have inspired me to make all my cheese. What inspired you to start making your own cheese? By the way, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, uh, Dan. Uh, what inspired me? Um, I wanted to know, <clears throat> no, I wanted to know what was in my own food, of course. Um, I didn't like processed cheese. Um, real good cheese. Uh, it was hard to find that uh, imported into Australia from Europe and other countries always tended to be quite old. Um, and uh, the flavour that was either dry or the flavour wasn't there. Um, and at the time, we were doing this thing called a 100-mile um, challenge, uh, food challenge, and uh, our family was, and we were trying to source all the food locally, and there were no local cheesemakers at the time. There are now, um, but, but way back then, no local cheesemakers. And, um, yeah, so I decided to make my own cheese, went on a course, and the rest is history. Uh, and you can go back through the channel and see all the very ordinary uh, crappy cheesemaking videos that I made way back when. But, uh, yeah, they still work. Um, thanks for your question, Dan. Okay, question from uh, Phil. Phil says, sorry if you've discussed this before, but can you go over the strengths of Renit and how to calculate how much you need? Uh, indeed, I have a blog post that I can share straight away uh, with you. Um, and it's actually called uh, Renit Strength Explained. So let me just uh, copy that and pop it into the chitty chat. Uh, there we go. So um, check that out. Uh, hopefully it's gone to YouTube and Facebook and you can see all of that. All righty. Um, another super chat there. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And that is from Adam. And Adam says, um, do you know of molds for a half kilo, one pound cheese? Uh, Adam, indeed, I do. In fact, we've got some in our store, um, probably incorrectly labelled at this stage, but we'll get there. Um, hang on, I don't know where you're located, but uh, I certainly have some. Hang on, I'll just uh, bring that up on the second screen. Screen sharing. Oh, yeah, baby. Here we go. Fantastic. All righty, hopefully you can see that. So in this product, which says blue cheese mold set of three, there's a mold, this one of the molds that come, hang on, I'll make it big. There we go. So this is a 14 centimeter across, which is a lot smaller than what my, um, uh, a lot smaller than what 
the normal 165 mil basket that I use. So this is 140 mil or five and a half inch. Uh, it's good for between four and eight litres of milk, which four litres of milk is about a pound of cheese. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it would. It's not a kilo, definitely a pound. Um, but yeah, and uh, I've actually been with a, um, a friend developing a pressing plate for this one uh, out of food grade plastic, and I've been doing some trials. So um, yeah, hopefully that'll be its own separate product soon with the pressing plate, but that's perfect for one kilo uh, cheeses. So look for a one that's about five to five and a half inches across in diameter and with a pressing plate. So try that out. Hopefully that'll work for you. Um, next question is, uh, here we go. I've got to find it. It's back here somewhere. Uh, I may meet, I may miss some, sorry about that. And, uh, that's what happens. Um, this one's from Johnny, and Johnny says, I'm using raw milk from a farm. Should I pasteurise it every time, regardless of the cheese in making? Could you speak about calcium chloride and its use when concerning pasteurisation? For sure. Um, when you're using raw milk, um, if you're making uh, cheese that is aged for 60 days, then you won't have a problem with raw milk and any any pathogens or anything like that. Um, however, if you're making fresh cheeses and stuff like that, I would generally pasteurise it. But pasteurise it using the method uh, low temperature, uh, long hold, uh, which doesn't kill off as many um, bacteria and enzymes, just kills off the bad ones. Um, Kim, if you can put the link up to the... Um, low temperature, long hold pasteurization or home pasteurization method uh, for Johnny, and that should help him there. Uh, as far as uh, using calcium chloride, if you've used any heat treated milk whatsoever, then yeah, definitely add calcium chloride. So anything that's been pasteurized to any temperature, then yeah, definitely use it because during the pasteurization process, it does denature some of the calcium that's available to the casein matrix which sets occurred so i hope that helps um my another here's a question uh from jaden thank you jaden what is your view on american cheese um uh american cheese like colby which is non-processed it's lovely i like colby uh that's a true american cheese uh american cheese as in the terrible orange cheese that's processed don't rate it I actually made some cheese like that, uh, but I used one simple ingredient, um, and that was um, uh, sodium citrate. So, Kim, can you pop up the link to the American cheese video, please? That would be fantastic. And, Jaden, you can check that out and see what my opinion is on it. A uh, question from Siphon Rider says, have you ever considered making cheeses from Latin America other than Mexican, i.e. Salvatorian, Guatemalan, Chilean, or Chilean, uh, and Argentina? Um, I have. Uh, in fact, uh, my uh, counterpart over in New Zealand, Dr. Casero, um, who who does speak Spanish fluently, has a book uh, about all of those uh, South American cheeses. And I'm just waiting for him to send me a copy. And uh, I will then start making some South American cheeses. Only problem is um, beforehand, before Dr. Casero reached out to me, we had a live stream a couple of uh, weeks back, um, is that all of the recipes are in Spanish or Portuguese and unfortunately, I don't speak either of those languages and translating them on Google uh, really didn't help because I'm sure there was things missing that I didn't understand. So anyway, so just waiting for that book and I will start making some Latin American cheeses. Okay. Um, Patricia says, um, no question, but just letting you know that I'm going to make uh, knuckle knuckle lost i think that's how you say it jim wallace's recipe a washed curd cheese with cloves cardamom and 
not cut caraway, maybe fennel seed instead. Sounds like a very interesting cheese, Patricia. Um, I'd love to see a photo of that when you got it done. Um, it's a question from John says, is it normal for blue cheese, Stilton style, to smell like barnyard whilst aging? Oh, indeed. Yes, it does. <laughs> it has all, all of the sense of the barnyard. Uh, it off gases um, uh, uh, ammonia usually and uh, earthy tones, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. Uh, during ripening so yes blue mold does create those gases and uh, yeah they smell pretty funky sometimes uh, especially if they're too moist if they're too moist you'll start getting a little bit of um, orange mold creeping in brevibacteria linens uh, on the surface but as long as the blue mold has got into where you pierced it you shouldn't have too many issues i've had that before and just had to scrape that mold off uh Thanks, John. Uh, next question is from William. says, when you vacuum seal a cheese, do you stop the vacuum sealer before it goes to max vacuum? Uh, no, I just vacuum pack the cheese. Do what it does. I hit the auto button and away it goes. The only thing I do differently with um, cheese these days is um, I double seal both ends of the bag just in case one of the seals um, uh, pop for whatever reason, um, and uh, yeah, that seems to work very well. Okay, uh, Molly says, can I use goat's milk for all of your recipes? Uh, yes, Molly, you can, definitely. Um, what I would do is add just a little bit more calcium chloride, probably about 10%. Goat's milk is notorious for having issues setting curds so it has a very fine curd structure and that'll help um also i would add uh probably five to ten percent more rennet as well and you shouldn't have too many problems okay uh we've got another super chat thank you so much that one's from scott i'll get to scott's now let's get rid of that one and down to scott's question and scott says um my tilsit didn't knit so well. It has cracks where the mould grows incessantly. I have to brush the rind hard to remove the mould after two weeks. Any advice? Um, uh, my advice would be, in the first place, would be to press it harder so it has a nice, clean, even rind. If you have too much trouble, uh, then um, if you find that the rind doesn't knit, then you can put the cheese into some uh, warm water uh, and then press it again, and hopefully that'll close up the rind. Uh, or warm whey if you've got it, um, if you're having issues during pressing. Um, look, I'd uh, if you've got so much mould that's not red mould, like blue moulds and white moulds and all that sort of stuff, funky stuff, Scott, then it's probably best to either vacuum pack or wax the cheese after you've done a quick clean. Uh, it's the only way you're going to save it. And um, just in future, make sure the rind's closed. That's the only thing you can do, really. But uh, thank you so much for your super chat. Okay. Um, back to the questions. Um, uh, Danny says, how do, how do I ask you a question? Just type a comment, mate, and that's how you do it. Okay, um, and we'll get back to where I was. Um, let me have a look. Uh, where are we? Sorry, I'm a little bit lost here, but that's okay. Um, okay, so yes, the last question before was American cheeses and stuff. Um, Uh, Kevin says, uh, do you know what other cheeses I can use for my Girol? Uh, Girol, you would have seen a video. Kim, if you can put that up, how to use a Girol. Um, uh, I have a wheel of fr <laughs> Frulini. I think that's how you say it. Uh, look, uh, Kevin, as long as it's a hard, firm cheese and isn't too, it w isn't wider than the blade, I don't think you'll have too much problems. Um, 
so you can do that so yeah uh, do uh, as long as it's a hard harder cheese and not too wide for the for the Girol blade thing um next question is from uh da, da, da. this is from randall and we got another super chat there and we'll get to that one in a second thank you so much for that um the uh, randall says um uh, hello gavin from halifax i made red leicester based on your video the texture was good but it was very salty will the salt taste mellow with age or is there some way to remove some of the salt uh no unfortunately not um so next obviously next time yeah you just use less salt and you should be good uh to go only a tiny bit less because you've got to remember salt's there for the preserving process uh leicester is a fairly salty sort of cheese um and the salt helps with the texture as well uh it won't mellow uh however if you want to get rid of some of the salt and really i need to do this with feta is uh soak it in milk so uh, for a few hours and some of the salt gets um, exchanged out of the cheese but with a thing like a red leicester which is a harder sort of cheese i don't think that would work very well but you could try it soak your cheese in milk and some of the salt comes out so give it a go uh, i don't guarantee success but it might work okay um the uh, knotted leathers says hi, hi gavin howdy from idaho um, I'd like to use rum instead of stout for a cheddar. Will the higher alcohol content break the curds down when I do a soak? Um, I have seen rum infused cheese, uh, and yes, they would do that when they do the curds. I don't. The curds won't break down per se. Um, I would think that uh, you may get a little bit less lactic. Um, development during the aging of the cheese so you may have to age it longer uh, remember the alcohol and rum is about 40 percent proof so or 40 percent abv whatever they call it um and uh sometimes higher and that may kill off some of the lactic bacteria uh, but give it a go that's the only way you're going to learn um okay uh, George says, uh, Gavin, what kind of container would work for aging cheeses in the fridge? I've started making cheeses. Thanks for your vids. But being a broke student, it's in a flat. It's hard to age stuff properly. Um, Chur. I think that means cheers. Uh, look, any plastic container with a raised bottom, you can go and get a bamboo sushi mat from the supermarket. Cost you about $2 tops. Put that in the bottom of a plastic container. Maybe get two and stack them on top of each other. As long as the cheese, when it's ripening, um, uh, and it's not touching the bottom or and swimming in its own way, that's what you're trying to achieve, uh, is elevated. So it's got a little bit of airflow under the neath and it can freely drain any way that's coming out. So hopefully that'll help, George. Uh, now, I didn't get to that super chat, as I promised. Sorry about that. And that was from... Where is it? There it is. It's from Jim Jackson. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it, mate. $10. That's fantastic. Uh, it says, greetings, Sir Gavin and Lady Kim. I love the new time as it's easier for me to work in your live streams. Love the channel. Hope Hamish is doing well. Uh, yeah, I think he's giving um, Kim the willies in the other room where she's moderating. Um, and I don't know if you can see. Oh, she's gone. Where's Holly gone? I don't know. Somewhere under my feet. That's where she is. Um, but yeah, both doggos are doing fine and growing well. I might do another video on the vlog channel um, about the doggos today, maybe. We'll see how we go. But thanks, Jim, for the kind super chat. Okay, um, uh, back uh, back up again. Um, 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 let's have a look. Um uh, somebody in um, another language says, be <laughs> which I can't translate, says, best cheese maker on YouTube, if not the world. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Um, uh, done that. Yep. Okay. Right. Next question is from Teppo. And Teppo says, have you ever looked into using dry aging bags for aging cheese? I think they might work quite nicely. You can Google 
uh, um, Umai dry age bags if you want to look them up. Um, I've already checked them out. And uh, hang on, we'll just, it's time for the gallery. That'll be the next thing we do. Um, I've already checked them out. They actually let moisture and air out of the bag, and that is bad. When making cheese, you you don't want all the moisture to go out and your cheese to dry out. So, no, they don't work very well for cheesing. Just the normal food saver bags work perfectly. Okie dokie, over to the gallery, and let's share that screen. Let's give that a big thumbs up. Here we go. Okay, so here is the gallery. Uh, today, the very first cheese is from Dan Price, and he made a Budakaza, and that looks absolutely lovely. It looks like he may have vacuum-packed it, which is fine. There's no issues with that at all because Budakaza being a moist cheese tends to uh, get a fair bit of mould growth. So looks like he's vacuum-packed it during ageing, but uh, a little bit of eye formation there, which is fantastic. Um, it happens on Budakaza occasionally, but yeah, lovely looking cheese. Well done. Well done, Dan. And the next uh, photo from Dan is, and it's still aging by the looks of it, is a Form Don Bear, which is a, um, uh, is a mold ripened, uh, it's not mold ripened, it's, well, it is, it's a blue cheese from France. Uh, hasn't cut into it by the looks of it, but he's cleaned it up a little bit and that looks quite nice. Love to see a photo, Dan, of it um, opened up. Uh, and this is a Jarlsberg that he's uh, opened up the wax. A little bit of swelling there by the looks of it, so I reckon there'll be some good eye formation. But, uh, yeah, crack it open when you're ready, Dan, and send us a photo. Last but not least, uh, we've got one from Kevin, and he's made a ricotta salata uh, six weeks old. He, um, he sent me an email and said that it's the first cheese he's ever made. Uh, and was using my ricotta salata recipe, and it turned out absolutely perfect. So great-looking cheese, nice and firm. Looks like you pressed it fairly hard, which is great, uh, and looks well salted. So well done, Kevin. Really, really good work on your first cheese, and it's great to start off on the simple ones, uh, which you have. So well done. Okay, uh, that's all of the... Um, Oh, that's me again. That's all of the cheeses for from the cheese gallery. If you've got a if you've got a photo that you'd like to share with all the curd nerds, then you can certainly do that. Uh, let me show you how. I'll bring up the um, the the method on how we do it. Where are we? Okie dokie. So um, let me just share another screen. I'm good at sharing screens today uh that one okay so here's my youtube channel uh not logged on um and uh, what you do is you go to the about tab just over here so this is where my little pointer hand is click on that go down don't have to read the description down here in details you'll have to sign in but you'll uh, see the email address that you can send your uh, cheese making pictures too. So you'll get an email address, you'll get a little capture, recapture, tick, I'm not a robot, and uh, bingo, boingo, away you go, and you should be good to go. So that's how you send photos for the gallery. So send them in. There weren't many this week. Uh, I wasn't disappointed, but I think they were lovely looking cheeses nonetheless. But uh, yeah, fantastic. All righty, so moving right along from the gallery, let me just uh, make sure that's all working still. There we go. Um, uh, Jaden says, what is my favourite cheap cheese? Cheap cheese. Life's too short for cheap cheese, by the way. Um, those, I don't know how cheese makers can make you know, the, the cheddar, the supermarket cheddar for $6 for a kilo when the milk actually costs more than that. They must be making it at such a scale. Um, so don't really know how they get away with it. But buy decent, buy decent aged cheese um, from an artisan cheese maker and you won't go back to supermarket stuff. Go to a cheesemonger. They've got lots of cheeses fantastic range and they'll even let you have a little bit of a taste of each one and then you can be the judge and uh, figure out what 
the best cheese is uh, or your favourite cheapest cheese, if that be the case. Okay. Um, what is the worst cheese, says George? Well, I suppose the, the worst one, I would say, is a lovely product from Sardinia called Casu Marzu, which is a maggot cheese. They let the cheese sit in these barns or lofts or whatever and flies blow into the cheese and when they eat it they eat it maggots and all so just go it's actually illegal because it, it kills people so yeah that'll be about the worst cheese so hmm not good um question from toby says hey gav are there any traditional australian cheeses and are you planning to go and visit the Pecorino cheese manufacturers in Italy. Uh, are there any traditional Australian cheeses? Only recently, a lot of artisan cheesemakers, and they're making some fantastic variations on uh, already pre-existing cheeses, but they put their own twist on it. Um, there are some lovely cheeses. In fact, I've got a lovely cheese in the kitchen fridge at the moment from a dairy in Adelaide Hills, the Adelaide Hills in South Australia, called Udder Delights. <laughs> Great pun there. Um, and it's a truffle-infused brie, which I'm going to crack open today, do a quick little video on that for everybody. Um, and a big announcement, and a great lead into the question there, uh, Toby, I've actually managed to... Uh, contact a truffle grower in Tasmania, which is some of the uh, best truffle growing here in Australia because of their climate. And uh, I've managed to score some fresh truffle, which will be available in July, August, which is truffle season. So I will be making a uh, a truffle infused cheese, which will be one of the, uh, I'm going to use my Oh, what recipe? The, uh, yeah, stabilised paste bloomy rind cheese, which is better known as the fake camembert, uh, because I know it's a, a known entity. I know I can get it to work well. It's a quick cheese, about six weeks, and the truffle flavour should infuse into that style of cheese very nicely. But, yeah, there are some great artisan cheesemakers in Australia. Um and if anybody's looking for somewhere to buy Australian artisan cheeses, I could not recommend any higher. Um, go to uh, Cheese Therapy. Uh, and we've had uh, Sam and Helen on the show before. Um, can't remember what episode, but yeah, Cheese Therapy. And uh, yeah, they actually, they're like a, an aggregator of Australian artisan cheeses uh, and they sell and ship uh, throughout Australia. So uh, if you're in Australia and you want to get some some very good quality Australian cheeses, then uh, yeah, go to Cheese Therapy and they'll be able to hook you up there. Um, and the other part of the question was, do I plan to go to the Pecorino cheese manufacturers? It was actually the, uh, dare I say, the cheese that cannot be mentioned, uh, the Grana Padano factory. No, I'm not going to take them up on their offer. They never, <laughs> I'm not paying to go over there to be insulted by those guys. So, no, sorry. Um, and they cut me deep, honestly. That <laughs> cease and desist letter. What a bunch of dorks. Anyway, moving right along. Um, purple person has a question. Purple IDV says, Hi, Gavin. When I was little, my grandmother, grandmother used calcium pills for making cheese. If I can't get calcium chloride, can I use uh, lactic calcium pills from the pharmacy? Hmm. I don't know. I've never tried using that. Um, I uh, They do sell a product called Pickle Crisp. I think uh, Ball sell it or Mason Ball, I think it is. Uh, and it's for using uh, in preserving, and that's calcium chloride and it's in a powdered form, uh, you need to make yourself a 30% solution of um, uh, calcium chloride. So 30% calcium chloride, 70% water, uh, non-chlorinated water, of course, and you've got yourself some calcium chloride in a liquid form to use with cheese making. So if you can't get the liquid anywhere, just buy some pickle crisp, uh, which is calcium chloride. There you go. Okay. Um, 
Here's a question from Justin. Justin says, Hi, Gavin. My Stilton blue has just been put into the cheese cave. Should I expect a lot of white and blue mold, mold on the outside of the cheese while it is aging? Indeed. Uh, hopefully more blue than white. You will get a little bit of white mold. Usually happens. Um, but, yeah, you will get a bit of mold growth on the outside. That's a blue cheese. That's what happens. Um and hopefully over the next few weeks, I'm documenting the growth of the blue cheese on the Castile blue that I'm making. And uh, hopefully that'll look really cool. But uh, yeah, you expect. And you may even have to scrape off the blue mould before you serve it up. Uh, I've seen blue cheeses that have extreme blue mould growth, um, sometimes to the point where it actually starts to make the paste quite soft but uh, on the outside. But scrape it off. And the cheese inside is perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, uh, next question is from George. And George says, um, are the Mad Millie cultures good for most cheeses? I bought a couple. I want to make a queso fresco or something like that. Yeah, indeed. Look, the, um, the Mad Millie cultures, no issue with them whatsoever. We sell them in our store, actually. Um, and I do use them for some of the small fresh cheeses and some of the blue cheeses and some of the white mold cheeses. Uh, the aromatic mesophilic is perfect for, or the, they, they relabeled it. I think it's called the fresh cheese culture now. Uh, but it's definitely an aromatic mesophilic culture and it works perfectly for cream cheeses, uh, any fresh lactic cheeses. And the normal cheese culture is perfect for making cheddars and stuff like that. So... Uh, yeah, I've no issues with those um, those cultures whatsoever. Um, Ruth says, my Spanish is pretty good, Gavin. I would love to help with the Latin American recipes. I love, I'd love to make some. Yeah, me too. Um, I'll see what I can dig up, Ruth. Um, I have to remember where, where the recipes were. Uh, they were some obscure website. Anyway, not so bad. Thank you very much. Um I noticed that uh, Cheese Therapy TV's online on the on the YouTube, and they said, uh, "Thanks for sharing." I think where are they? Where are they? there? They are. So Helen and Sam, or one of the two, are actually watching the show. So <laughs> thanks for sharing. We love your shows. No problems at all, fellas. Uh, you do amazing cheese. Okay, uh, back to some of the questions. Uh, where did I get to? Um, Uh, here's a question from uh, Jay Carter. Says, why not vacuum seal my Bel Paese? I'm not fond of foil. You do you, mate. Honestly, if you don't like the foil, vacuum pack it. Uh, it'll still turn out fairly well. The foil just um, stops any mould growth and lets a little bit of moisture dissipate out of the cheese because it can still breathe. Uh, that's the only reason I used foil when I did it. Uh, if you vacuum pack it, Expect a moisture cheese. Uh, okay. Uh, next question is from... <clears throat> uh, hi, Gavin. Is it possible to use cheese making produced whey as liquid rennet replacement? Uh, only for lactic set cheeses uh, that don't normally use rennet anyway. But no, there's very little rennet in the, uh, the whey. Uh, so, no, it won't work as well as you think it would. Um, I have seen some people use a um, uh, way to introduce uh, lactic bacteria back into the cheese. So, for instance, in uh, a skier factory in Iceland, the manufacturers there used the day before's way to coagulate or lactic set the skier for the next batch the next day. Um, but it's not the rennet in it, it's the lactic bacteria. So I hope that helps. Okay, um, Annette says that uh, I'm going to attempt my first holy cheese next week. Uh, I'll be following your Emmental cheese recipe. I hope it goes well. Um, Emmental recipe is pretty good, but there is a better recipe, Annette, if you're going to make a holy cheese. Try the, um, what's it called? Uh, the Yalsberg much better, or even Leodama. There's another 
<clears throat> recipe. Kim, can you put the uh, link up for Leah Dharma on the YouTube, please? Uh, and that'll help out immensely. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Annette, try that. Leah Dharma or um, uh, Yalsberg. Uh, I think a better recipes than the Emmental. Uh, when you make the Emmental, it's got to be a really, really big cheese to get decent eye development. Whereas when I've made Yalsberg and um, and Leah Dharma, uh, then, yeah, I don't have too many problems at all. The eye development's really good. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, it's a question from Jesse says, what about cheese in soup? What's the deal with that? Okay, well, if you've ever had... Um, <clears throat> sorry, if you've ever had traditional uh, French onion soup, that's real French onion soup, they actually put Gruyere on top and sometimes even blow torch it so it gets a little bit crispy. Um, so, yeah, cheese and soup is good. Um, when I make a... Oh, it's, it's more of a casserole than a soup. Um, I put in the, you know, the rind of the parmesan, the really thick part of the edge. Perfect in soups. They actually make really good chips too, where you can put them in the oven and they crisp up. They're very cool. Um, but yeah, cheese in soup is good. Cheese in anything is good. What are you talking about? It's great. Okay. Um, Chasp says, Chaspex says, my curd happens to sometimes clump together whilst heating. When the temperature approaches 38 to 40, I use raw, raw milk and try to make Gruyere style cheese. Any advice? Yes, keep stirring. Um, and if worse comes to worst, make sure you've got clean hands. I've had to do this before when uh, I use some of those um, um, higher temperature cheeses. And just put your hands into the curds and break it up. Um, yeah, that's what I do. That's what I have done in the past. Okay. Um, Lindsay says, uh, good morning, Gavin. Can you talk about cheddars that become bitter at some point, please, cause? Yeah, definitely. So there's a couple of reasons cheese goes bitter. Uh, not aged long enough is one of the reasons. Uh, and the um, uh, the proteins haven't had enough time to break down uh, and it's a bitterness. And then if you age it for another three months, it goes away totally. It's fantastic. Uh, another cause of bitterness in cheese is not enough salt. Uh, not enough salt does uh, won't inhibit the lactic bacteria from continuing to consume lactose and cause bitterness in the cheese. Uh, another issue with bitterness in cheese is if you use too much rennet or too much calcium chloride, both are fairly bitter. You taste them raw and yeah, they are bitter. If you use too much, it can overflow into the cheese during maturation. So there's a few tips there that should help, but age them longer and they don't go bitter. Uh, they stop being bitter. <clears throat> there you go. Um, usually if you cut the cheddar too early, that's when you'll find it is bitter. All righty. Um, Kim says that Hamish is being a good boy for me. <laughs> good. Uh, hopefully we'll see him at the end of the show. Um, let's have a look. Um, ba -ba -ba. Molly says, I sent him some photos uh, but I'm not sure you've got them. I'll have a check, Molly. Sorry, I might have missed them. I get so many emails. But definitely, if you did send them in, I'll pop them into next week's show. I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, uh, uh, Ruth says, I sent a pic, Gav, um, exactly as you said. Sorry, Ruth, I must have missed yours too. Uh, it was a mad scramble this morning. Hamish was giving me the willies, so I didn't manage. To, obviously, I didn't scroll down far enough to get all the pictures, so terribly sorry about that. Okay, um, let's have a look. Uh, there's a question from Hans. It says... Um, Great wise cheese man, can you tell me if it's possible to make blue cheese using lactose free milk? Your dedicated fan from Norway. Um, yes, I think it would be actually, because if you use the petite blue recipe, 
very quick aging cheese, 30 days tops. Uh, I don't think it has too much of a problem with it. And uh, I think it would work out. So give that a try. Uh, Kim, if you could pop the link up to the Petite Blue, uh, that would help out hands immensely. Um, uh, da, 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 where are we? Uh, lots of people says they've got, oh, that, who's that? Leaf, well, Green Leaf Kitchen. I have raw milk from our Jersey cow. Budokai's cheese is my fresh right now. I'm using a recipe. Thank you very much. Hopefully it turns out all right. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Kevin says, in Canada, standardized milk says vitamin D is added. Does regular milk not have enough vitamin D? And is this good or bad? Good question. Um, I'm not sure, Kevin but I'll have to do some research and uh, you can ask the question again next week and I'll know the answer, but I do not know the answer why they add vitamin D to milk. Uh, I would think that it normally would have enough personally. Um, but yeah, thanks for your question, Kevin. Sorry about that. Um, question from uh, fun death. It's not that fun. Um, if I press a ricotta cheese uh, brackets, one made with citric acid, will it form a solid cheese or will it just be crumbly and fall apart? No, it'll be a solid cheese, all right? Don't you worry about that. In fact, one of the photos in the gallery was indeed a, um, a ricotta salata, which is a pressed ricotta cheese. You shouldn't have too many problems doing that. Uh, yeah, but you got to, as Nicola says in the chat, it will stick together, but you have to press it quite hard. Indeed, you do. Uh, at least 50 pounds of pressure or 22-something kilos. Okay, we've got eight minutes, nine minutes left in the show. Um, uh, so uh, if I haven't got your question, then there is still time for a super chat. No obligation, of course, but if you want your question and you want me to see it, then, yeah, that's what you do. Uh, Alex says, hi, Mr. Cheese, man. <laughs> I'm a big fan of feety cheese. What's your favourite kind? Uh, by feety cheese, I think you mean washed rind cheeses. Lovely smelly feet smell. Uh, once you get past the smell, of the um, the taste is amazing. Um, my favourite. Oh, look, any washed rind cheese is very nice. I haven't come across one I haven't liked. One of my favourites were Tilsit because it's made with... Um, uh, thermophilic starter culture and the paste is more intense and tight um i did like that a tilsit is a great recipe and if, i don't know what kim's doing but if you can pop up the recipe for tilsit kim that would be absolutely fantastic um robin says that i uh, made i've made your bell paisy recipe and i very much enjoyed it thank you so much it is a lovely cheese it is really nice uh and you you I have not seen it anywhere to be bought in Australia, so that is good. Okay, um, next question is um, uh, Chuck, I think. Chuck. Uh, Chuck says, I just found your channel. What's your sous vide method for heating? Thanks for showing me another use for my ANOVA unit. Um, I... Now I just have to learn how to make cheese. Uh, indeed, Chuck. Just watch a few videos, mate. It should be good. Um, I actually found it particularly disturbing, some of the comments under the um, uh, under the sous vide uh, video. Uh, there were some uh, food snobs, obviously. Um, that's what I'll call them. Uh, that didn't quite like me using the word sous vide for what I was doing with the precision cooker. Anyway, I had a brief discussion um, and, uh, yeah, left it at that. But I couldn't believe that just simply using a sous vide to heat up a water bath, and I called it that, a sous vide, that's what everybody in the cheese-making community seems to know it as, um, said that, no, that's not sous vide. That's the sous vide is the process of cooking. And I said, am I not cooking the curds? And I thought, no, nah, gotcha, mate. So, yeah, anyway, you can check out some food snobs in the sous vide video if you really want to. Okay, a um, few minutes left. We've got a couple of questions we can do. Um, Howard says, um, I don't know if it's the same in Australia, but happy Easter, Gavin. Have 
Oh, ever had a cheesy Easter or a cheester? Um, I've seen those in the UK, Howard. The uh, They make Easter eggs out of cheese. Very cool looking things. They are proper cheddars and they do press them in molds that are egg shape. Uh, and they're proper mature cheeses. They're not manufactured and they're not um, processed cheese or anything like that. And they're very cool. Um, we don't have those here in Australia that I've seen anyway. So, uh, no, very cool. Um, Kat says, can an auto add bitterness? Worried I overused. No, it doesn't. It doesn't cause bitterness in cheese. It doesn't impart any taste in the cheese, no matter how much you use. Uh, however, as a, in neat form, it can be corrosive, would you believe, if you if it's in a high enough strength. Uh, so, no, it won't, it won't do anything to the flavour of the cheese. It just make it very, very orange. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Is there a question that I haven't answered? Uh, Tepo says, is there a cheese that would like you would like to taste but you either can't afford or get hold of. You know, I would like, before they go extinct, to try a uh, a real Normandy camembert. I want to try one of those, and I want to see what they taste like compared to what we can get here in Australia or all, all that sort of thing. So that would be lovely. Very hard to get because they're so fresh. Got somebody knocking on me door. Um I think it might be Hamish. Hang on, I'll just go get him. We're uh, close to the end of the show. Hello, here he is. He's a scruffy looking thing. <coughs> there he is. Say hello, everybody, Hamish. Don't, don't look so surprised. Say hello. Look, there, there, just look. Can you oh, sit up prop? There we go. There he is. Look at the camera over there. No, doesn't want to play. See ya. Bye. Here we go. Off you go, mate. All righty. So uh, that's the sign that the show's finished. He's getting big. He's a big boy now, aren't you, Hamish? Yes. Uh, I won't answer back. But anyway, um, sorry I couldn't get at everybody's questions. Um, I think Kim might be giving me the wind up because it is three minutes to the hour. Uh, don't forget that if you want to... <coughs> purchase any cheese making equipment we ship to a few countries now um uh, us canada uh nowhere in europe unfortunately um uh, some um, of the asian countries as well um but uh yeah you know, go and check out littlegreenworkshops.com.au let me just uh, there we go there's a little titley thing so you can get your supplies there if you wish uh, don't forget if you want to buy any of the merch, there's the merch shelf down below. There's also the um, uh, my cheese making book is in digital form there. Thank you, Hamish. Um, and uh, yeah, so you pick up merch and cheese making supplies. And don't forget to check out my vlog channel. Uh, for those who are interested, where is it? Let me just share the screen before everybody runs away uh there we are there it is gavin weber vlogs um and i release a video weekly um and yeah it's a great little channel with uh, things that are happening other than cheese making sometimes a little bit of behind the scenes cheese making but uh yeah some good stuff there so you can go and check that out anyway i will say adieu to everybody and we will see you same time um hopefully no more clocks are changing so this will be the regular time for about six months fingers crossed uh we will see you next week same time same channel see you later bye bye curd nerds